G'day guys, today we're taking a look at another alternative OS for the R36S, Pan4 Elect. This is an unofficial Amber Elect build, which currently only supports R36S consoles with screen type 4. If you're unsure what screen type you have, there's a handy online tool I'll link down below, which you simply upload your DTB file from your R36 SSD card to, and it will identify which panel it is using. We will be installing it to a cheap SanDisk 32GB micro SD using a no-name USB micro SD reader. With that out of the way, let's get into it. We're over on our Windows 10 Chromebook now, and to start off, we're just going to go to Google and type in P4 Elect space R36S space GIT. We want to click on the KEGG link. We want to click on P4 Elect. On the right-hand side, we want to go down a little bit and click on Releases. We want to scroll down. And we want to download the .gz file. So you can just click on it. While that's downloading, we also want to download a program called Rufus, which we'll be using to write our pan for elect image to our micro SD. So it's going back to Google, typing in Rufus, R-U-F-U-S. Click on the first link, rufus.ie. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And I like to use the portable version, so I'll be getting 4.6p. You'll also need a program that can handle .gz compression. I like to use 7-zip. If you don't already have it installed, just go back to Google, type in 7ZIP. The top link, 7-zip.org, and click download. Once all three files are finished, we can close off Google Chrome and go to our downloads folder. We want to right click on our pan 4 elect image, go to 7-zip if we're using that, and extract to pan 4 elect folder. Once it's finished extracting, we'll open up the folder, and just make sure there is an image file in there, should be around 2 gig. And there is. So next I'll insert my 32 gig SanDisk micro SD into my USB reader and we'll plug it into my laptop. We'll open up Rufus. Make sure you have the correct device selected. For me, it's eDrive, 32 gig. Just be aware that by writing the pan for elect image to your micro SD, you will lose all the files on that micro SD card. If there's anything on there that you want to keep, make sure you back it up first. Once you're ready, we want to click select. We want to open up our pan for elect image. There it is there, double click on it. Keep all the settings the same and just click start. Once again, you will lose all the files on that micro SD. So double check you have the correct device selected. Once ready, click OK. Once it's finished writing, we can click close. And we will click on this PC and double check we have a 2 gig image. We do, pan for elect. There it is there, E drive. If it hasn't shown up on yours, it's possible Windows just didn't auto mount it. If that's the case, you can continue on with the guide. But if in the next step, it doesn't boot, and almost definitely it didn't write correctly. We'll go down the bottom, we want to safely eject, and we'll pop our freshly written micro SD card in our R36S console. Just inserting our SD card into the right hand slot, slot 1, and we'll power on the device. We've got something on the screen which is a good sign. If you can't see anything on the screen by this point, then something has gone wrong. Double check you have the panel 4 variant and also that the image was correctly written to the SD card. Also be aware the first boot takes a few minutes. It may look like it's frozen or broken, but just be patient and it should eventually get to the main menu. It's finished booting, took about two minutes and there should be no games on there, but everything does seem to work. So from here, just press start. Go down to quit and shut down system. Just do a safe shutdown. Once the system's powered off, we'll eject the micro SD card and we'll put it back into our Windows 10 Chromebook and copy some games over. Back on our Windows 10 PC, just putting the micro SD card back into the reader, back into our laptop, and we should have a games partition pop up, which we do, F Drive games. We also have the 2 gig partition from earlier, E Drive, Pan for Elect. We'll just double click on our games drive now. And here are all these system folders. Very similar to the Easy ROMs partition on ArcOS. We want to copy all of our ROMs over to the correct folders in this partition. I'll copy some games over and we'll come back. I've finished copying over all of our test games. So again, I'm going to right click on the bottom and safely eject our SD card. We'll put it back into our R36S for the last time and take a look around pan for elect once again, putting the micro SD into slot one, the right hand slot, and we'll power on the system. So it has found our eight test games. We've got one Game Boy, Super Nintendo, 64, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, PlayStation 1, 
and PSP. We also have retro achievements, which is pretty neat, but I think we have to manually add them ourselves. Under favorites, not much there. All games just has all of the games. There's obviously no box art. I haven't scraped anything. Have a look at tools. We've got our file manager. Cloud save, backup, and restore. That's very cool. We don't have built-in Wi-Fi, but it is a uh, very cool feature. Display timing fix. It's not for this device. Another file manager. We can turn on our SD card activity light, so it shows when it's reading or writing. We can mount external drives. And the usual file cleaner you can toggle the speaker on and off. This is designed for when you have external Wi-Fi and it's interfering with the speaker. You can hear the crackling, so you can disable that. PSP save files, cleanup, scum VM, and standalone emulators. I noticed there was no port master pre-installed on here, so that could be an issue if, if you do want to play ports. But I believe you can manually install it, not through the main menu, but just drag your ports into the ports folder. We'll start off with Psalm 64. We've got Ocarina of Time here. It is mentioning the missing BIOS files. We'll try it anyway. So out of the box, it doesn't look too bad. It seems to be running about the same as the default Arc OS. We'll check the start menu. And it is taking quite a while to open. There we go, and it does have the same glitch that the stock ArcOS N64 emulator had. And there should be a buggy equipment screen, it is. And press start again. So it is using the default core. On ArcOS we had the same issue and we just changed the core to Glide64 which fixed that. But on here I can't seem to bring up the RetroArch menu, which is a bit annoying. The hotkey for save and load is select instead of function. So select and R1 saves. And if we move out the way, there's no on screen text saying it's saved. But if we do select and L1, you should load that state. But again, there's no on screen display or anything. And I can't seem to work out how to enter the setup. But it does seem to be working okay. Just be aware that I haven't found out how to change the core. It doesn't seem to be using RetroArch, so it might be using the standalone core for that, which probably is the reason the shortcuts are different. I should be able to do FN start. Nope, should be select and start. There we go. Select and start does quit out still. So 64 out of the box, not the best. So I'll leave 64 there. We'll go over to PlayStation 1. It's got Crash Bandicoot 2. Again, no BIOS, just using the stock one. Looks nice and crisp, no lag. At the intro anyway. Does seem to be running perfectly fine. Full speed, no slowdowns. See if I can bring up the RetroArch menu. I cannot, but fast forward seems to be function and R1. That toggles it. So in PS1, function is the hotkey. So function and B seems to be the RetroArch menu key. So PS1's fine. The hotkeys are slightly different to Arc OS. Takes some getting used to. We'll try PSP next. It's got Mega Man powered up. Nice and easy one to run. So first impression seems to be working fine. We do still have the random slight lag spikes. We did have the same issue on Rocknix. I didn't notice the lag spikes at all on Arc OS, so I'm not too sure what's causing it, which just happened again just then. If I run back and forward, you might be able to see the spike. But no major issues, pretty much the same as ArcOS I guess. 
Just there is the occasional very, very slight lag spike. We'll see if we can bring up the PPSSPP menu. On ArcOS it was the left joystick in. On here it is just the function button, so that's pretty handy. I prefer that over the left joystick in. Obviously you can change the hotkey in settings, but just default. They did mention that they had custom bezels for Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance, so let's take a look at them next. Super Mario Land 2. And here we've got the little power LED on the left, and Game Boy Pocket on the right, it's pretty neat. There is nothing on the screen at all. It looks like Game Boy does require the Game Boy BIOS to run. I'm assuming that's the issue. So that is a shame. Out of the box, you do need the BIOS. I'm guessing it's just the emulator that it's using. Must be uh, fairly accurate. We'll close out of that. We'll try Game Boy Color, see if that's any better. It's got Mega Man Extreme to test. Again, there's no BIOS. But on ArcOS, you didn't need a BIOS, at least by default. So Game Boy Color does work, and we do have the nice bezel. We also seem to have a custom overlay. It looks like a, um, the individual pixels. A lot of people say that's the uh, scan lines, but Game Boy never had scan lines. It wasn't a CRT. It does look okay in real, in real life. It's not coming across too great on camera. But yeah, it does have a very, very uh, faint pixely effect. Which I guess could be neat. It's pretty hard to see, but on the bottom right of the bezel, it is different to the other three corners. There's more of a grey curve. I'm guessing it's just off-center, because again, this uh, Pan4 Elect build is just Amber Elect ported over. It was never meant for this uh, handheld, so I'm guessing that's the issue with the bezels. Or maybe that's just how the designer intended. But yeah, it is the Game Boy Color logo on the right-hand side. is off-center too, as you can see. It's too far to the top. So it is something worth noting. We'll try quit out. So again, function start is the hotkey. And we'll try Game Boy Advance, see what the bezel looks like. Again, no BIOS, we'll see if it actually works. We've got the nice Game Boy Advance uh, logo at the bottom. It's nice and centered, it looks really good actually. And yeah, Game Boy Advance seems fine as well. No surprises there though, it runs fine. On the stock emulator, or the stock OS, as well as Arc OS and Rocknix. We'll take a look at SNES next, see how well that runs. Again, function is the hotkey on this one. So I guess anything using the RetroArch core, it is mapped correctly. It's just the other cores, it's a little bit different. We'll try Super Nintendo. We've got DKC2. And we'll try fast forward, should be function and R1. And it is. Does seem to run fine, no issues. No slowdown or anything. But again, I wasn't really expecting any issues with Super Nintendo. Not on this device anyway. There is another cool feature available in pan 4 Elect, and that is last game played. So basically you hold down function. This only works in RetroArch cores, so it wouldn't work in this uh, Nintendo 64 because that wasn't RetroArch. But if it's using RetroArch, hold down Function, and just tap the power button once. And it should save state and safely power off. There we are there, completely powered off. And if I power it back on, it should load directly into DKC2 and load the save state. Now it didn't seem to load the save state. I'll see if I can manually load it. And I can't load the save state, which is a bit of a shame. I will try it again. 
I was going to the level. And we're in the level now. So hold down function and press the power button once. And it is powered off. It's fully powered off now. I'll press the power button again to turn it back on. Again, it's not gone to sleep. It is a hard shutdown. So it worked that time. Not too sure what happened the first time. Maybe I double pressed it and it didn't like that. Also worth noting, it took 26 seconds to go from power off back to this DKC2 safe state. That is definitely a handy little feature though. If you're only playing one game at a time, like Pokemon, and that's all you actually wanted to play on it, then it's definitely, definitely handy. So we'll close out of this, go back to the main menu. So what did I think about pan 4 elec It was slower to boot versus Arc OS. So from completely powered off to being able to pick a game, it took about 10 seconds longer than Arc OS did. That could be a deal breaker for some. The last game feature is very, very neat though. I could see people using that a fair bit, especially if all they want to play is one game or they want to finish a game before starting another. It's a great little feature. I will look into enabling that on Arc OS, I think, in the future. There was no port master out of the box, but I did notice a ports folder on the games partition. So you should just be able to copy over your installed ports and load them up. You could potentially actually install Portmaster onto this as well, but again, I haven't looked into that. The stock shortcut keys are slightly different between the emulators, or I should say the Nintendo 64 doesn't seem to use RetroArch, and that's why. But all the ones that did use RetroArch, they were uniform across the device, but again, they are different to ArcOS. The main drawback for this, I think, is that it only officially supports R36 consoles using panel type 4. Unfortunately, I don't have a different console to test, so I'm not sure if simply copying the correct panel type over would work, or if it just wouldn't boot at all. It's definitely very cool and very impressive, but it's just not quite ready yet. I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.